Hi Mike, how you doing? Great, how are you? Very good. Uh, you're the co-founder of Stack and Tilt. Yes. We're going to uh, have a little bit of a look at my swing today if that's okay with you. That sounds great. I'm going to take some pictures and then uh, we'll give a description of what we see. Okay, right. great. Let's Thank do you. It. Okay Marcus, if you just go ahead and hit a few shots, I'm going to take some pictures. Very good. Nice demonstration, Marcus. The way Andy and I look at this uh, when we watch a player is we watch or measure how the player hit the ground. That's the first thing that we can separate uh, uh, between good players and poor players, where they hit the ground and, how, and what frequency. The second thing is how far the player hits while hitting the ground in the same spot. And then the third area is uh, the dispersion or the predictability of the curve of the ball. So I watched about uh, four or five balls there, and first, you, you didn't hit behind any of them, number that's one. That's good. That's good, right? <laughs> Which I expected of you. And then secondly, you hit the ball high and far. All the balls were push draws, and which was also the third area, you had a predictable curve on the ball, which uh, makes you basically an expert player, all right? Now, inside of that, inside of that, uh, there's always room to improve the dispersion on the ball or possibly hit the long clubs even higher and farther. So I'm just going to take a look, look at your pictures and see what I see could it be improved the most, okay? Alright, great. Mark, so I'll just put my finger by the left hip first to see if a player moves that center off the ball. Yours moves slightly off the ball, but then you move forward again on the through swing, which all good players do. The second thing I would do is see if your head moves back or down or forward on the back swing. That stays pretty stable. Now, uh, you're a very good player, experienced player. I think the, the masses of golfers see a picture like that, a good player who moves one or both centers back on their backswing and uses that as the piece to describe why this player is a good player. What I think is that the experienced player who moves one or both centers back moves far enough forward, fast enough, long enough, to, and the same amount every time to, so that their contact's always the same. Now, I'd like to share with you just what I see in your picture, which all good players do how the player hits the ball far enough to compete. Every player uh, you see on the TV does a three-dimensional movement in their body to use their body like a catapult. For 50 years it's been described as a spring or a coil or a turn and a turn. Now the 3D machines come along and measure what all the players do and they start with, oh look how much the core is working here. You've got to have strong core. Well Kevin Stadler is using his core, hits the ball high and far and straight, but he's not really spending time in the gym. In other words, what really happens is every golfer that addresses flex forward because they're playing on a tilted angle, at the top of their swing they all extend. As they extend, the player goes into a side bend, which keeps their head from raising up from the ground as they extend, and they turn. So if I just put in a big category, the average golfer you see on the range has all the turning component back and forth. They don't have enough of the extension in the side bend that the expert player does. And yet no one up to this point or recently has been ever told to extend on their backswing. They're always told to stay in their posture and turn back and turn through. Another way to uh, uh, illustrate that would be like a a wood chopper. You've got a plane that you're swinging on, there's a horizontal plane, but there's also a vertical plane. The wood chopper wouldn't take the axe back and just take it back a foot and just chop the wood. He would extend his whole body and then flex again. That's a vertical force and that's how Bubba Watson, he's using that the most, extending the most, and he's got the thing rigged to hit the ball really far. I don't think he does anything unique, he just does the most of the parts that would make the ball go far. On your uh, through swing, the player extends, side bends, and, and turns on the backswing. On the downswing, the player does it again. The player goes back into flexion on the downswing. That's like the, getting the pressure on the ground like the jumper has. To extend again to create a force that they can make the club move really fast. So it's like the high jumper extending, flexing, extending again. That's Tiger Woods or somebody they always talk about him flexing on his downswing. He's getting that pressure so that he can extend again through the ball. Most people, again, aren't told to extend. They're only told to turn and then don't slide your hips. 
which I think is uh, another important point is that if every golfer extends on the through swing, all their heads would raise up from the ground if that's all they did. The player does extend, but their heads should never raise up because as their hips slide forward, they create a side bend, which keeps the head from raising as they go into full extension through the ball. If that makes sense to you, Marcus. So I think you do all those pieces uh, uh, pretty well. Looking down the line, I just watch the hand path, check to see if the head raises or lowers on the back swing. You know, so like if I had a preference, that's a six iron. If you were hitting a three iron there, I think the back leg would straighten even more, the pelvis would extend more, and the thorax and neck would extend more, so your swing on a three iron would be even longer than the six iron or the wedge. And I think, again, I think that has been out of uh, favor in golf instruction because I think, again, that you have to have the resistance. So don't straighten your back leg. Don't extend on your back swing. I think that's another reason why people have very short swings. I don't think it's really a, a physical problem. I think it's more dexterity. They're just not told. Anybody that can stand up and walk, I think, can do a functional golf swing. Now again, if I took any took anything apart here, or your swing direction, your path goes out more to the right than I would prefer. I would swing more in a circle, the club exit a little bit closer to the neck. I would have it exit right by your shoulder like it did on the downswing, the hands came through. I think there's just a couple of things, Marcus. I think uh, one is, uh, it's great pattern. I think you could reduce the push and the draw part just by straightening out or smoothing out the path. One, I would put the tees under your armpits to keep the arms from feeling like they're ever lifting. And two, as you hit the ball, you are increasing the knee flex as you hit the ball, which is stopping the hip turn. I would keep straightening my legs, which will allow my hips to turn on the through swing. So if you could, I'm just gonna punch one out, a short swing. Just punch the ball out with the tee staying underneath your armpits and the legs straight when you hit the ball, okay? Okay, let's, uh, let's give this a whirl. I'm gonna put my two tees under my armpits. Right, short follow through, arms straight. Okay. Legs straight when you finish. So you'll be facing the target. I'll take a picture here. Okay, why don't we take a look at that? Less outward, right? could still straighten the legs up just a little bit. Face angle stays more uh, square to the arc and the hands and arms stay down. And that, that feels like a punch shot to you. Yeah. And I think it's about 80% or 85% of full swing, right. minus just a little bit of flexion in the arms and the recocking. Yeah, on the way down. Right, a lot of our friends always refer to Zach Johnson as that practice. He keeps his arms straight and keeps turning with no bending his wrist or arms. And he hits these draws pretty consistent, yeah, sure. okay? extended turn better next thing i would do is just the right leg being extended just a tiny bit more but again you can see how that feels like a punch shot and to me that looks like where elkington finishes his fall yes, through, right yes, yes. i think that's one of the pieces that attract people to steve swing is that every time he finishes he stops the same yeah. kind of like the gymnast coming off the you know the dismount they always stop the same way. There's no wobble at the end. Yeah. I think that's attractive when people watch a swing. Yeah. But I think, there's a, I think there's a function to it yeah. as well. Yeah. Okay, very nice, Marcus. Obviously, that was a, a short but a very you know, informative part of, of Stack and Tilt and your method. Well, thank you. I hope the uh, help clear up some of the uh, uh, confusion over what we teach or how we describe it. Uh, I would describe Stack and Tilt as a clear definition of a classic swing or a three-dimensional description of the swing demonstrated by all good players.